Hello and welcome to today's live coaching call the community conversation. Today, I titled today's video or conversation, three tips for women who want to start intermittent fasting. And I really should have titled this three tips for women who want to be successful with intermittent fasting, but I really am looking to target some eyes on women who are looking at intermittent fasting and maybe they're afraid of it. And I want to help you if you're thinking about dipping your toe into it. I want to help you think about and create a mindset where you can be successful with intermittent fasting. And then for my OGs or my women who are intermittent fasting, I want to offer you an opportunity to look at fasting from a different vantage point or maybe a different mindset so that you can also feel like this is something you can really embrace and hold on to for the rest of your life. So welcome. If you're new here, my name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman, where we take a mindset approach to creating a lifestyle for ourselves where we can look and feel our best and live our most authentic life. And the tool that we are using is in fact, intermittent fasting. So welcome. Um, I am going to post because it is very close. Uh, the link to join us for our May 6th course, please keep in mind that registration does close on May 5th, which is a Friday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to jump in with us, you have to get on my email list or you can go to fortodaysagingwoman.com. There's a place where you can register for class today. Once you register, you do get um, immediate access to all your course tools and downloads. So you'll get the intermittent feasting guide and journal as well as the intermittent feasting fasting and feasting. There's two guides. There's a feasting guide and a fasting guide because here in this community, we ask ourselves every day how long we're going to fast and how we're going to feast. So fasting and feasting are very similar words. They often get a little tongue tied. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's talk about today's conversation. I'm going to give you three tips that I want you to really take some time to think about. I'm not going to talk about nutrition specifically per se, what to eat and what not to eat. But I want to talk to you about how we show up for ourselves mentally and emotionally when we want to make some physical changes. And oftentimes we think that we're missing a secret component to nutrition. Like if maybe if I just ate more kale, maybe if I incorporated vitamin D, maybe if I did the new scientific data thing that everybody's talking about on the internet, maybe that's the thing that I'm missing. And I want you to leave today knowing you're not missing anything. You have all the information that you need to live a very healthy and happy life. What I want you to think about is why it is we are desperately searching that, searching that one little missing thing in a food or a plan, or a diet, when we haven't really done the work that we need to do to create these lasting lifestyle changes. So here's my three tips. I want us to think about intermittent fasting as not the food part, right? And if we think about it, we're talking about fasting for the majority of our day. And here, what I like to teach is the 20 hour fast. So why is it that we're still so fixated on the food part? It's only four hours of our day, but it is that driving mental and emotional component that I think we don't spend enough time on and evaluating and really doing the work with, right? Because it's not whether you eat four ounces of turkey or six ounces of turkey, that's that's not the problem. The problem that a lot of us are having is how we have the condition to show up around food. So the first tip that I want women to think about if you're starting intermittent fasting, if you're coming back to intermittent fasting, if you've decided that the, the and realized that the wagon is not really existing for you, there's nothing that you're falling off of. You're just choosing different things that aren't serving you. When we can get to that point, we can start to make some progress. So let's say even restart intermittent fasting. Not eating is not fasting. And I know that's a double negative. And so if you're part of the grammar police, I get you. We're just going to go with it today because I'm trying to make a point. We want to embrace the fasting component of what we're doing for the true benefit of what fasting can do for us. And that is take away the problem. It's like the elephant in the room. It's the thing no one wants to talk about. Food, how we use food, soothing ourselves, using food for boredom, using food thinking it's going to solve our problems. That's 
the problem, right? So when we start intermittent fasting, why is it that we want permission to put creamer and sugar and the little bite of thing and the mint here and the 15 calories and all, why is it we want permission to do all of those things when we're really seeking out to fast, right? So what I want us to remember and realize is we don't need anything in our fasting window except fasting. So not eating, meaning you haven't sat down to a proper place setting, doesn't mean anything if your goal is fasting. We don't want to put anything in our body that's going to cause a chemical or more importantly, a hormonal reaction because it's the hormonal reactions that we're creating very innocently throughout the day that is really the sticking point for so many women and we think it's something else. So if you're a woman who's struggling with your weight or feeling like the season of life that you know you just kind of got hit in the forehead over and nothing's working for you anymore or your your hormones are out of balance and we're talking hunger hormones that are significantly thrown out of balance because some of the other hormonal changes that are happening in our body. If you're feeling like you're losing your mind, if you're feeling all of those things, it's because you haven't really embraced the power of what a true fasted state can do for you because you're coveting the little hits of food that you need throughout the day. And I want us to know that we are okay without the hits. We can live without creamer in our coffee. We can live without the little itty bitty snacks someone said you can have. You can live with all of without all of those things. And when you really embrace that and have that experience of how energized and calm and optimistic you are without needing a hit, my friend, you are free. So the first tip is... You want to truly fast. Just give yourself the opportunity and trust yourself to just get into that fasted state. You don't need a little hit. Number two is understand feasting for you. And this goes back to how I introduced today's discussion. Food is food. Food hasn't, like real food, hasn't really changed a whole lot, right? We know shopping the perimeter of the store is the best way to do our grocery shopping, staying out of the center because that's where all the processed food is. Like we've learned that. We know all of that. You are not missing a magic pill. If you embrace feasting from a common sense approach to you and the life that you love to live, right? The life you love to live. Because the reality is with the diet aspect that we've all experienced is that we've exited our life to do something very restrictive and unrealistic to achieve a physique or a weight that also is not very realistic because as soon as you go back to your life, the dreamy body or weight or whatever tends to go away because that's not really you living a life you love. It's a very restrictive life to take a photo or step on a scale or take a win for whatever it is you were searching for. And I can say this from my own personal experience, it's a short lived win. Why can't we have it all, right? Why can't we have food we love, of course, in moderation, so that we can have what it is that we say that we really want? And that, I believe, for most women, especially in the season, is to be happy and healthy. And you can have both things, but we have to get a grip on reality of what that is. So understand feasting for you. Don't wait for someone else to tell you what to eat. You know what common sense nutrition is, and you know the food that makes you happy. Now, when I say happy, I don't mean an emotional fix or a dopamine hit or escapism from some things that you're managing in your life. I mean the core of who you are happy. Like you are waking up every day, looking and feeling your best and doing that in your most authentic way with no regrets and no guilt and no remorse and no blame. Find that food. That's the food that's going to really help you. And the beautiful thing is when you're fasting, food for the majority of the hours of your day is taken out of the equation. You don't even have to think about it. You just get to enjoy your food for four hours or six hours or whatever it is you decide to incorporate. And then the third thing is your relationship with food matters. This is the one everyone wants to escape from and not to do the work with. I've been coaching women for 30 years. This is always the underlying problem. When I can ask you why in a a setting, 
enough times to get you to, to tell yourself the truth about where it is and what you're unhappy with and what you're uncomfortable with. And you can get to what really matters to you, the sore, the soul and core of who you are as a woman. It usually has nothing to do with the food itself, but how it is you're using food when you're in situations in your life where you don't have any other means or skills or way to cope with what you don't want to feel. And so when we can uncover this for ourselves, this is the work I have also done for myself. When you can really understand why it is this relationship you have with food is also the driving force for a lot of the things you're unhappy with, you can change this relationship. You have all the power to do that. But it starts with us being really honest with ourselves. And this is where I believe the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course has been the game changer for so many women. You have to sit in that fasted state with no quick fixes, no little dopamine hits, no little comfort things. I ask you to sit in that so perfectly uncomfortable until it clicks for you that you are okay there. Like you're going to be fine. That's actually where you have your best power. That's actually where you are your most emotionally confident and strong. You just haven't had permission to do that for yourself yet. And when you get to that place, then everything else really starts to click for you. I want to share with you guys a comment that I just got inside of our community group for our intermittent fasting course. And it was a woman who just graduated from class and how she was feeling really stressed out because some things were happening in her life. And she felt like the stress and anxiety was kind of building up for her because she didn't have her old tool to manage these things that were going on that weren't food related. Like, so life happening and her, her, her go-to used to be food, right? To make her feel better. And she didn't have that because she was making this conscious choice to change her lifestyle and that she felt like not having the tools she used to have was making it worse. And so what I asked her to consider was what if that tool that you used to use wasn't working for you then either, you just didn't know that you had options. And what if now not having that thing to numb you or distract you or take you away from actually having to manage your problem was exactly why you were in class? What if you needed to learn this skill and that that thing that you thought was the power tool that you had and the thing that you always had in your back top pocket to pull out was actually the reason why you were seeking out something new. And now that you have something new and you have this new set of tools and you have this new discovery that you are fine just as you are, just feel your way through it, manage your way through it, think your way through it, don't avoid it with food. What if now you can actually really solve your problems and you're not creating excuse me, new problems because you're managing things inappropriately. This is where your relationship with food will really start to change because you're making a conscious decision to fast, not eating, not putting anything in your body, not the comfort of that sugar and that creamer in the morning so that you have that fake sense of comfort that everything's going to be okay. It's going to be okay anyway, just because you're deciding your life is going to be okay. I want to offer this to you because there are so many people out there and for all for good, right? Because research is great. Finding out this new information is great. We do want to have common sense um, information about how it is we're choosing food and healing our body and exposing ourselves to things. I get that. We need that. But you're okay just as you are. You are okay just as you are. You just need to understand where food is playing a role in your life and why is it that you're continuing to let food have the power over you. And when you take that away and you sit in your own temporary discomfort and then you realize that that discomfort wanes when you then replace it with your superpower comfort, then food starts to take on a new role in your life and you start to have a new relationship with it that's much healthier. So That's how I like to coach. That's what I end up having you realize when you come into the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman class, the aha moments and the light bulbs that go off every single month at the same exact time inside of that course 
is absolutely jaw dropping because we do get to get, give ourselves the permission to just live our lives. And we all get to realize we can be happy and healthy. So that's my message for you guys today. I hope you're hearing this at a time when you need to hear it. I hope you will realize that these are your power tips right here. Just lean into the fast. Don't be afraid to trust your body. Don't be afraid to feel the discomfort that's temporary in a state of hungry. Once you make that connection emotionally and mentally that that is really your power place, you will lean into that. So I just did a 26 hour, 26 and a half hour fast from Tuesday to Wednesday. I do it for mindset and emotional reset purposes only. It is amazing how powerful when you use something like intermittent fasting for something outside of physique. It is amazing how powerful intermittent fasting can be for you as a woman when you use it for the inside of you and not the outside of appearance. It will change everything for you and your confidence and your vitality and your energy and your enthusiasm, all the things, all in one 20-hour bout. So, I encourage you to try it from this standpoint. I encourage you to trust that you have everything that you need. You have all the knowledge that you need about the best nutrition options for you. I don't want you to leave your life. I want you to celebrate. I want you to have memory making moments. I want you to go on vacation. I want you to do all those things. And I want you to be able to do that without stress. Okay. That's my soapbox for today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions and comments for you. And then uh, we're going to cut out of here and get on with our Thursday. I put in the comment section the information for joining our next course. If you want to have a life-changing experience where you don't have to follow a meal plan and you want to have all the advantages um, for you to get what it is you say you really want out of your life, I highly recommend jumping into class with us. Tina, 2028 grad. I mean, I think you mean 2018 grad, my friend, but I get you because I, I can decipher those things because I do those things all the time. Because of your inspiration and motivation, I am back for 20 hours of fasting and feeling amazing in my clean fast, right? And then once you experience it, jumping back in is just super easy. Your body has amazing muscle memory, and I believe our body wants to live with us making these kind of decisions for ourselves. So girlfriend, it's so good to have you back. Thanks for checking in with us. And I'm hoping uh, that I'm going to see you inside the midlife mindset shift course soon. Uh, Brenda, hello, my friend. It's so good to see you. Are those pearls you're wearing? Absolutely stunning. You're gorgeous. Uh, Eva, hello. Sandy, new glasses. I love them. Thank you. So these were my old ones. They're very similar. I kind of have a vibe. Uh, these I like, but they seem, you have to guys let me know, like looking at it from your side, they seem a little glary. Like I can see the light I have right here on them. So I might have to take them back and make sure they have the anti-glare on them, but I like them. They're super cute. I also have bangs. I don't know if you noticed. I, as soon as she cut them, I immediately had regret. So we're going to just kind of go with the flow for a couple of days and see how it works. But my hair is a little longer. So I've been trying to like wear it back a little bit and I wanted a little, you know, a cute bang to hold hang there. So we're going to go for it. But thank you for noticing. Um, I appreciate it. Alexis. Hello, Robin. Um, January 23 grad. Love the fact it's about resetting hormones, rethinking how I approach eating and thinking. If you're thinking about jumping in, um, just do it. Thank you for, um, saying that my friend, I appreciate you. Yes, it is really great. So I now use intermittent fasting the way I used to use a long run. So back in the day, whenever I felt like I needed an emotional reset, um, I always used to uh, consider um, running like it was my therapy. I used to call it my Prozac. It was where I, I felt like I had like my best like spiritual moments, like where I could just connect with the universe, like all those things, right? And now I feel like a good long fast does the same exact thing for me. Like, and that's why I'm doing this Tuesday to Wednesday thing. I feel like it just connects me to the universe. I feel like I have my clearest, most emotionally stable and mentally stable thoughts. I feel super um, empowered. I feel very motivated. I feel very confident. It has nothing to do with weight. It has nothing to do with physique. It's like, how do I want to show up in the world? And the end of one of those kind of fasts is exactly the way I want to show up. So I'm using it for that. And, um, and I know a lot of other women in our community are doing the same thing. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, it is, it is all about how we feel. And I think if you can connect to that feeling first, um, then I always say this, the, the physical part will catch up. 
But if you're doing it from the physical part first, I think you're missing and you're really taking advantage of the power of fasting. Um, and I always think that that's a shame because then it'll probably be short lived. For nearly two years, I wasn't really fasting, just not eating. There's a huge difference and it's a game changer completely. 100% Sandy. And here's the thing that I also like to encourage about the not eating is not fasting. This doesn't mean that every single day for the rest of your life, you can't have creamer in your coffee or you can't choose to have creamer in your coffee or you can't do something in your fast that might temporarily, you know, take you out of a fast. That's, that's not what I'm implying at all. What I'm saying is that there's power here. And once you understand this and you want to have one of those really powerful fasts or really emotionally changing and uplifting or mentally, emotionally or upchanging, or you want to just move the needle on something, this concept will never fail you. And when you do this part, you really work on your relationship with food and what feasting means for you, then jumping in and out of fasting is effortless. When we're not working on this part, then we struggle because the struggle always starts here. Our body wants to feel this. Our body wants to take advantage of what a fasting state does for us. Our body wants us to do good by it. And it's always our brain that gets in the way, right? It's always the thoughts we have about food or dare I say the lies we're willing to tell ourselves about why we're making food decisions. And when we can get really honest with that and own the decisions, because there are times where, dang, a chocolate chip cookie is just really good and that's okay. You can have chocolate chip cookies. You can have a glass of wine. You can have all the things you want to have. Just don't beat yourself up for it. And that's where working on the relationship with your food really matters. And it is a thing that we always have to catch ourselves on because it is one of those things that's really hard to break, that dialogue we have in our head. And we're not supposed to be perfect. We've talked about that in this last week as well. You can still like go, mm, do I really want to eat those two chocolate chip cookies? Eh, oh, well, I ate them. Let me move on with my life as opposed to I'm fat, I'm I'm. I'm lazy, I'm dumb. Like it's all those kind of things that we tend to default to that are really harming us as a woman, as a society, whatever, because we live in this negative mental mindset. So we want to make sure we're always catching ourselves and then reframing our brains as well. So Sandy, you're doing all the great work, my friend. Eva, just joined the Midlife Mindset Shift. Eva, I'm so happy to have you. So tonight at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we have our first group coaching call. So you're more than welcome to jump into that. I put the link in the community group. So make sure you can log into the community group. Make sure you know how to get in and out of your libraries because there's all of our past recordings from this year. Coaching calls are in there. Um, and then you should also have access, I believe, to your Midlife Mindset Shift course as well. I'm letting you guys just kind of do that uh, from day one of joining in. And then you can bring some of those questions uh, that you have with that to our group coaching calls or your community group as well. Girlfriend, we do good work in there. We do good work in there, and I'm so, ha I'm so happy to have you now be part of that uh, conversation and community with us. So welcome. Miss Melaby, this couldn't be more relevant to what I needed right now. Down 106 pounds, then added 14 after turning to eating for loneliness and boredom and choosing to stop fasting. Back on track. Yes, my friend. And and here's here's what I want you to recognize today. I don't want you to sit in, I gained 14 pounds. I want you to reward yourself and congratulate yourself and do some thought work on, I caught it. And I realized that I was slipping back into some old ways and I'm not accepting that behavior. And so here's my, I say this all the time, my draw the line in the sand moment. And now we're gonna do things differently. Don't spend a lot of time in this direction. My friend, we move this way. Everything we do is for today and tomorrow. So jump right back in, continue this journey that you're on and girlfriend, do one of these also. 106 pounds is amazing. You are doing good things for yourself and you deserve all this work. So I'm so proud of you. Keep it up. Um, Ker Crazy, hello, Eva. Hi, Dan, looking forward to the Midlife Mindset Shift course, although I know the work will be hard. It's not hard. It's not hard, my friend. I want you to come in with a mindset, the mindset of this is the work that I've been waiting to do my entire life. Come with that mindset. 
This is the work I've been waiting to do my entire life. And now you have an avenue to do it. So we're opening up the door. We're opening up our arms to everyone in there loves everyone. And we all work through it all together. So come in ready to do one of these, roll up the sleeves, right? And know that you're ready for this. And I, I cannot wait to watch you move into everything that you say you really want for yourself. Delinda, hello. I love your videos. I love you being here. Thank you. Brie, should you fast less before blood work? I've heard it can affect cholesterol. H affected in what way? I don't like, what would your option be? Because if you eat, that also affects your blood work. So everything you do is going to affect your blood work. If people are warning you that if you fast, it's going to raise cholesterol levels. Here's I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I have high cholesterol. I have had high cholesterol my entire life. So it's not because of fasting. There are people who want to say it is, but it's not. It's just who I am. So is it because if you're not eating and you're fasting, then food's not the reason your cholesterol went up. So could it be that your body's doing its job and it's pulling cholesterol out of places that it's been stored? I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. Why is that such a bad thing? So I don't, this is why I talk about these things here in this community, because I don't want you guys getting caught up on all these like one off like things people. So what if it changes your cholesterol? What are you worried about? Fasting does great things for people, you know, and it, I believe it's the way we're supposed to live our life. So what are you afraid of about your cholesterol that you would not fast and know that feasting is the thing. Food is the thing that affects everything that's going on with our body hormonally. So I guess eat and then see what that does for your cholesterol. I don't know. Like I always question that advice. Like where's that coming from? And what are you so worried about? Are you trying to hide something with your cholesterol? Maybe fasting is pulling it out. You got to figure that out for yourself. But I believe that that is the most, for me personally, if I saw that advice, I would think that would be the most nonsense advice that's out there personally for me. Miriam, lost 57 pounds, need 20 more, September 22 grad, feel great, love my skincare products, everyone says I look amazing, 66 years, feel great and sleeping great, thank you, Diane, God bless you. Well, Miriam, you're doing the work, my friend, and so congratulations to you, and God bless you, you're doing great things, and people are noticing, and I hope that means that you'll be able to pay forward this amazing way that we get to lo uh, live our life. So girlfriend, you keep doing what you're doing, um, and it shows, so that's always great too. I always love, there's no better compliment than a compliment from a woman, in my opinion, like when a woman notices that you're doing good things. So hopefully you're getting some compliments from your girlfriends as well. That's a genuine compliment in my regard. Like not that men, men give genuine compliments too, but there's something about a woman telling another woman that she's doing great things and it's noticeable. I don't know. That just hits different for me. Um, and so I think it's because women can be so critical of each other. And I, I grew up in that kind of environment. So that's probably why women com compliments are better. I digress. But own that, my friend, and just know that you're doing good work and, and keep that little pep in your step. UCF mom, good afternoon from Central Florida. Hello. Um, I'm really I'm in my late 60s and could would love to learn how to properly do fasting. Well, that means you need to jump into class with us because I teach you how to properly do fasting. Uh, so make sure you're on my email list. The link is in the comment section. I'll post it again because I know it kind of gets lost in the feed. You can also go to the description box in today's YouTube video. You can go to my website, like the link is everywhere. Get in with us, my friend. I will teach you how to do it properly so that you can uh, reap all the benefits and more. Uh, yes, I love this line in the sand onward for me. Yeah, it's really that easy. And it is like something that I, I do like mentally and physically. I'm like, today's the day. Like you can literally like today's the day, no more. And just create the decision that you've already, you already know you've, you've said, right? You've acknowledged that something's not working for you. So why would you keep doing that thing? You don't have to you get to do something different. And my friend, we can't wait to hear back from you. Come back on Monday and let us know how your weekend went. Um, yeah, come back in. You don't get, you guys don't ever have to worry about fixing typos with me. I'm the typo and grammar queen, obviously double negative. Like it's just the way we talk sometimes. Um, you're good. So, but I appreciate you. I figured it out. Diana, November 22 grad. I love the sense of calm now. When an issue comes out, I don't turn to food anymore. Rationally work through it now. Love that factor. Yes, because you have to, you can't distract yourself by doing something else. 
mindlessly, like going to eat. Um, and you will also manage things in your life in a very clear and level state of mind. That's the energized sense of calm gift that we get back from fasting. So super happy for you. And I'm glad you're recognizing that. Brie, cholesterol has been increasing and the doctor is recommending statins. So I was hoping to get a lower reading. So, so, um, I also have high cholesterol. I said that already. Um, go talk to a cardiologist. Let them know what you're doing. I would have them look at other factors than just your baseline cholesterol because there's also information out there that, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Us, we need cholesterol, especially aging women. We need cholesterol. Um, but there's also some things that, you you know, you might be able to consider. One of the other things that I did was I got a calcium heart score test. So you might want to look into that and then also maybe looking into some other blood work that you can do that was going to give you more definitive information than just the everyday run of the mill, like, you know, complete blood tests that they do on your annual physical. So look into a lot of things before you just accept that you have to be on statins because it might not be what you need. Fasting will be something that will really help you. Um, and there's some supplements you can take. So do some research on that. There's a lot of things you can do. You don't have to rely on statins if that's not what you want to do. Now, if you also want to take statins because you think that that's what you should be doing or that's the route you want to go, that's also okay. But if you don't want to, I want you to also know that there's options for you. Again, I'm not a doctor. That's just the advice I like to give. Um, sleeping great. Uh, yes, Miriam agreed. I sleep so much better when fasting. Yeah, I love that. And that's another one of those warnings out there that people say that if you're fasting, it interrupts your sleep. And if your sleep is interrupted, then your cortisol goes up and you know, all these things. So just get to the root problem of what fasting, what sleeping is for you, what's good for you, what you need to do to make that happen. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, Nell here. Stop thinking about IF. You should jump into class and just do it. What do you have to lose? Probably a lot of body issues. I, IF heals your body and changes your life. Yeah, and it changes your mindset too, which is what we're working on here. And now you're doing great things also. Uh, you're welcome. You have Mom. Yes, Mina. February 23 grad. I just need to brag because it was all you. You helped me with mindset 20 pounds down. I will take that, my friend. I will take that because... Um, we have, I have done a lot of work here in this community to really deliver a message that allows women the opportunity to choose something that will give them freedom uh, from body issues, food issues, food dependency, all these things. And I want women to leave the time that they spend here with us knowing that they are perfect the way they are. Um, and so I'm happy for you, my friend, and I'm happy that you've lost 20 pounds because I also know that that's a very, uh, a very, a very freeing thing, especially when you feel like your weight is stuck and you feel like your body's kind of letting you down. So I want you to take all the wins there, my friend, and I will take the compliment for sure. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, Robin, UFC mom, get in class. I'm 67 next month, living my best life. You won't regret it. Robin, 67 next month. What day next month? My birthday is May 2nd. So my birthday is next Tuesday. I will be 57. 57. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, you won't regret it. UFC mom, we take good care of you. And then we'll get to talk to you like hopefully by your first name, because I'm sure you have a first name. You're not just a UCF mom. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Mimi mom. Let's see Mimi mom. I'm, I've already gone through menopause. I'm still on hormone therapy. Could that be preventing me from achieving my weight loss goals? I don't know. I don't know. I would jump into class. Are you, did you, did you take class? Um, if you took class and you feel like you're fasting correctly and like thoroughly, and you're getting that clean fast, you're really understanding how your body's responding to the feasting choices that you made and you still feel like your weight is stuck, then I would maybe take that to your doctor and see if maybe that is something that's kind of hormonally got you, um, you know, kind of held up. Remember weight loss comes when we're hormonally balanced and the hormones that need to be in balance are our hunger hormones. And then we also need to understand, and this is what I teach in class, that hunger hormones, some of our hunger hormones, insulin specifically, is directly connected to the drop in our sex hormones. So that's why so many women get like literally like feel like they got hit by a truck with weight gain and fat gain and all the things that happen when insulin 
becomes the problem. And for so many of us, that's the real problem. And so we can balance out our hunger hormones, our insulin, our ghrelin, our leptin, we can balance that out through fasting, then we can start to see a, a change in the in the scale or, or with our physique. But then if we're also putting hormones into our body and it's going against what our body is trying to do on its own, that might be where you're stuck. I don't know. And then that's where I always say you have to go back to your doctor and have a really open and honest conversation about the risks and benefits of the hormones that you're taking. And is that something that you really wants for yourself and you can live with and it's getting you all the things you want, then maybe a weight gain might not be the thing that, you know, is, is, is worth you getting off of them. Or maybe it, it's like, you know, I'm not really getting any benefits from it. Like I thought I would, why am I putting myself in this position? You're the only woman that can answer that for yourself. And so you have to do a lot of that, like pros and cons work too, for sure. Robin, uh, Diane, June 3rd, my granddaughter turns one on May 3rd. Ooh, love it. A little Taurus season. Beware. You're going to have a little Taurus in your life. Uh, uh, I love it. So congratulations to you on June 3rd. How, how cool is that? You and your granddaughter have a birthday that's a month apart. That's super cool also. Okay. That's my little lesson and conversation for today. I appreciate you guys being here. I hope this is something that served you. If you catch this on the rebroadcast, I hope this was a message that you got when you needed to hear it as well. That's why we show up and do all of this. Again, class starts on May the 6th. I would love to have you in. You can end the struggle bus in three weeks. Actually, the struggle bus starts to end after week one, so seven days you will start to see the light. You will start to feel better. The second and the third week, we just create that solid foundation for you to stay on uh, so that you can live on your own after you graduate from class as well. And then you just come back here and hang out with us. So super fun. Uh, sign up. It was the best money spent on in ages. August 22 grad and grad of the Midlife Mindset Shift course too. Thanks, Diane. You rock. Marianne, you rock as well, my friend. Thank you for coming back in and checking in with us. You know you're always welcome here. We love our graduates coming back in our community. And it is. I think it is the best money as well. $197 for a life-changing perspective for you and your future self. And I also help you save money. When you come into class, I will teach you that there are a lot of these little quick fix things that you're putting into your life that you're spending money on because Fred on the internet said this was the one thing that you needed and it's really not the one thing you needed and you could keep your money in your pocket. I really teach you how to do this so that you can benefit in all of your life. So um, Marianne, thank you for mentioning that. Go Team Taurus, May 7th birthday here. Yes, we should have a birthday party all month in May. Everyone celebrating their birthday in May. And yeah, I know we all have birthdays every month too, but like, there's just something special about in my opinion, us May babies for sure. So happy birthday to you, my friend. I, what I love about having a birthday in the middle of May too is I, I also have taken advantage of Cinco de Mayo. And if you're new here, maybe you don't know, but I'm a tacos, chips, salsa, and margarita girl. Like I love everything about that lifestyle. And so I always felt like there was a birthday party around my birthday, right? Because I love Cinco de Mayo. So hopefully you uh, take advantage of that celebration as well, my friend, and take a little bit of that for you. Tina, May 20th here, another May birthday. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. My dream would be to have someone on my team uh, who um, helps us all celebrate our birthdays every day and every month, because wouldn't that be nice? I think everyone should be able to feel great on their birthday. And I hope as women, I have never been shy about this. You will always know when my birthday is. I hope you're you're singing loud and proud your day and that you're soaking it all up for you and getting all the things that you want. I think that's super important. Um, and it's okay too. It's okay to be a little selfish on your day for anyone, for sure. But I've always been that person. Like you will always know when it's my birthday. I'll always invite you to come celebrate with me. I love it. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you around. I'll see you on Monday here on YouTube and Facebook. I'll see you on Friday on Instagram tomorrow. And then I'll um, see you in class, hopefully in May, if you're deciding to join us. If you're in my midlife mindset shift course, registration is now open. If you're a graduate, please email me. We have had some serious email problems. We're working on it. I've had to hire a team to come in and help us uh, get our email situation sorted out. So if you want to come in and you're not getting my emails, please feel free to email me and I will um, get you all the information that you need to jump in class with us. I do believe the Midlife Mindset Shift is a community where we do the work that you know you've always deserved to do. Maybe you just haven't had the time, energy, or avenue to do it. So we would love to have you in there as well. All right, you guys, have a good weekend. I will see you later.